According to the satellite data, there has been no significant global warming for the past 18 years. When the full data are available, we will find that 2015 was the warmest year that the globe has seen as far back as we have reliable records. Um, what's ironic is it's really those satellite uh, data sets that uh, critics like John Christie hold up. Uh, uh, that uh, Ted Cruz was emphasizing in that Senate hearing a week ago. The satellite data are the best data we have. We need to look at the satellite data. I mean, this is the best data that we have. Um, it is those data sets that are subject to the most adjustments that have historically been found to have been biased, um, actually in the direction of showing too little warming. For a decade during the 1990s and early 2000s, Climate skeptics John Christie and Roy Spencer argued that their reading of satellite data showed no atmospheric warming, even a cooling. Finally, a series of studies showed that satellite data was not being correctly interpreted. The problem was friction. Even hundreds of kilometers above the Earth, atmospheric friction slows satellites down, and they lose altitude. Every year, they were falling about a kilometer closer to the Earth. To derive the temperature, scientists need to know the correct altitude. And without that, the results were distorted. For many years, John Christie and Roy Spencer claimed, based on their analysis, that the lower atmosphere was actually cooling. They were wrong. They had gotten, literally, the sign wrong in adjusting for the effects of satellite orbit drift on the sampling of Earth's large daily temperature cycle. In addition, this meant that a satellite that started off measuring the temperature at 2 in the afternoon, in a few years was measuring at 6 in the evening, making it look like temperature was cooling when it had not. Although chastened by their repeated mistakes and failures, Spencer and Christie remain very active in questioning the mainstream science of global warming. I can tell you as a temperature monitoring expert in 50 years, we won't be able to see the effect. I got a note today from our official climatologist, Dr. Roy Spencer. The regulations being established will do nothing to alter whatever the climate is going to do. When they made corrections, they were still underestimated and they managed to do that uh, at least three times, I think, which was unfortunate. So what does a satellite actually measure? Well, a satellite doesn't measure temperature, it measures radiance, which means it measures uh, basically photons of, of energy that the atmosphere is emitting. In fact, what it really measures is voltage on some detector. And from that, it has to infer radiance, which is, you know, these photons that are coming out of the atmosphere. The problem is that these microwaves are emitted not just from the, from, from the oxygen atoms as in proportion to their temperature, but from the surface, from thick clouds at different elevations. And then from that, they want to derive temperature. How do they do that? Well, they use a model. Now, they don't call it a model. They call it a retrieval algorithm, but it's a model. And if you look at the history of the satellite data, the model that has been used has been shown repeatedly to be wrong. Dr. Christie and Dr. Spencer, when they put this out, they have been wrong, I think, at least four consecutive times. Each time, the data record has had to be adjusted upwards. We used to have a negative trend, then we had no trend, and now we begrudgingly have an upward trend. I don't want to bash them, because everybody makes mistakes, and I'm going to presume everybody's being honest. But I would just point out that, imagine the howls you would get. The climate model predicted it was warmer at night during the day. You would hear people on the other side just screaming bloody murder. How can you believe this? It's all, you know, these people are incompetent. How can you possibly believe a model that has this wrong sign of diurnal cycle in it? The physics is obviously all screwed up. But of course you don't hear anybody talk about that with satellite data. It goes to show you the amount of confirmation bias that's actually going on in this debate. The satellite data are the best data we have. We need to look at the satellite data. I mean, this is the best data that we have. That these people accept the satellite data with completely uncritically because it tells them what they want to hear. You asked about the, the source of the data on the right chart. It's, it's actually not Dr. Christie's data. It's the remote sensing systems, the RSS data that, that is up there. I guess it depends on which graph exactly you're talking about. One, the, one of the ones that like Senator Cruz likes to show actually uses the data that I make 
which is a measurement of the, um, the um, temperature of the middle trophosphere over time. The entire data set actually starts in 1979 and goes to the present. But he really likes to focus on the part really after 1998. He starts at that time for a very specific reason, and that's because there's a huge El Nino event in 97-98, which puts a huge spike in the global temperature. And of course, if you start at the top of a hill and you start driving, you're going to go downhill, at least in the beginning. And that's kind of the effect we're seeing here. You start your time series at a place when it's really high and it's pretty easy to get no warming or even cooling if you do that. Uh, 1998, Big El Nino. So it's kind of interesting we started 18 years. We don't look at a 15-year data set or a 10-year data set or a 20-year data set. We look at an 18-year data set. I, I fail to see the significance. Actually, Senator, it's not. If you take off that top really big spike and you take that out, you start getting the upward bias. And this is what uh, people do when you start looking at these relatively arbitrary times, is you start with a really high number at the left-hand side, and that kind of influences your, your basically your linear trend. So... When you start looking at things like every decade, you have an upward trend in the data. I think the longer the time period you can look at, the better. And if you look at a longer time period, then you get a better idea of what the overall trend is. Senator Cruz focuses on one data set, mine, from one type of instrument, satellites, and he ignores all the other evidence. For example, the surface temperature record, you know, things like the Arctic sea ice declining, things like the time of year that plants flower or leaf out or whatever. An increase in the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere, uh, changes in sea level, changes in the heat content uh, of the global ocean. And all those things, sorts of things he's ignored and he's just kind of glomming on to this one piece of evidence that supports the story he wants to tell. Scientists are looking at moisture, at rainfall, at water vapor, at surface humidity, at the cryosphere, at snow, at ice. And all of this is telling an internally and physically consistent story. And that story is the planet is warming. And despite our best attempts to see whether natural causes can explain that warming, they can't. Now, you were recently uh doing some fact-checking for The Daily Show, is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> what did they want to know? They just wanted to know, you know, they wanted to fine-tune their statement about, you know, whether, you know, the surface temperatures are more accurate or the satellite temperatures are more accurate. And initially they wanted to say something like, but you really shouldn't trust the satellite temperatures, you should go with these surface temperatures. And I said, well, what I would like, like them said, you really want to look at all the different data sets. So you don't want to trust only the satellite temperatures. You want to look at the surface temperatures and, and that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, has Senator Cruz called you for any fact um, No, he has not. Okay. <laughs>